Well, I'm Jim Chatters, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about uh, my new book that, and uh, from me and Jason Cooper and Phil Letourneau uh, called uh, Hunters of the Mid-Holocene Forest. It's uh, about archaeological work at the Granite Falls sites. It's a series of sites that are part of the Olcott Complex in Puget Sound region of Washington. And uh, Olcott is a manifestation of the uh, Old Cordilleran tradition. And I first encountered Olcott in 1967 and was just amazed by the immense bifaces. I mean, a biface is bigger than my hand, long leaf shaped uh, pieces, and uh, have always been fascinated by it. It uh, was part of B. Robert Butler's uh, old Cordilleran tradition. It was one of the uh, uh, sets of assemblages that he was looking at when he came up with the idea of the old Cordilleran tradition. And I'll show you a little bit about that. I'm going to share a screen with you here. Um, old cut is found throughout Western Washington and really manifestations very much like it occur in British Columbia, Southern British Columbia, and out into Central British Columbia, really, and down into uh, to Oregon. It's uh, a very widely distributed manifestation of B. Robert Butler's old Cordilleran tradition. And um, Butler came up with this idea in 1960. And uh, as I said, I began excavating on sites like this in 1967. But by the first decade of the 21st century, we still knew almost nothing about Olcott. And uh, there are, the reasons for that are myriad, but the Primarily, it has to do with the nature of the environment here on the West Coast. Uh, the forests are ubiquitous and forest soils tend to be very acidic. Add that to the fact that almost all the Olcott assemblages, really all of the Olcott assemblages, have been surficial. They've been on, on glacial deposits uh, that are older than they are, and therefore they've been sitting there on the surface and experience these forests, experiencing these forest conditions for thousands of years. As a consequence, all bone has been dissolved. Uh, the features are disrupted by bioturbation for tree throws and, and rodent activity and freeze thaw. And the acidic conditions are so severe that even the stones are partially dissolved. As you can see, it's sort of throat lozenge like uh, projectile point fragments here. You add to that the fact that there's never been a consistent approach to analyzing this lithic assemblage. So in uh, 2009, the opportunity came up to work on several uh, Olcott sites. And so I jumped at it and uh, acquired that as a contract. And so this project is a, a CRM project conducted as, as a research project to, to try and solve a problem that I've been trying to address for many years. As many CRM projects develop. Um, it was supposed to begin in the summer and the contract wasn't finally signed until winter. And so we began in January on this project. Uh, very extensive excavations at, at three site localities in the pasture and in the forest. As you can see the conditions are not wonderful for excavation in the forested environments. The project produced a large quantity of artifacts. We had over 16,000 artifacts recovered, uh, ranging from uh, cores all the way down to spent projectile points. As a consequence, we were able to develop, to work out the uh, reduction trajectory from these pyramidal-like cores. It's a very much like a core and blade industry, although they weren't producing blades for use directly as blades. They were using them to produce projectile points and scrapers and the like. But it was very surprising that we found that they were uh, a core and blade technology. A tremendous number of these bifacial projectile points and bifaces. So this gave us a chance to understand the nature of the lithic production process and its trajectory. And we found enough projectile points in various conditions ranging from brand new, as you see at the top left, to completely spent at lower right to understand the, the life trajectory of these artifacts. And it became clear that they were designed, they were flaked in a, a, a form 
that planned for breakage. So they were intended to be snapped at the tip end or at the base and rejuvenated and used over and over again. We also acquired enough information from the sites to understand subsistence. We've got a little bit of information anyway on plant usage from this first ever cooking feature from Olcott uh, after all these years. Uh, we found a few animal bones in calcined condition. Uh, and we were able to establish the age of the deposit uh, through thermoluminescence dating, artifact style comparisons, and a few other techniques. To understand the environment folks were interacting with, I, uh, my collaborators and I uh, spent our own time. We went over and cored a bog that was less than a kilometer away, obtained a uh, 14,000 year plant record for the region and were able to establish that these folks were occupying an, an environment that was highly dynamic and uh, that they were using a series of uh, newly regenerating burned forests as their primary habitat. So that's what we're gonna tell you about in uh, Hundreds of the Mid-Holocene Forest. <laughs>